The work we've chosen for presentation tonight first saw the limelight of the old Prince of Wales Theatre in the early days of the Mauve Decade. Our audience tonight is predominantly youthful. Small boys and small girls stumble to their seats and await the rising of the curtain with stern and critical eyes. For this is the story they know so well, the story of Robin Hood. <laughs> Applause beats the rise of the curtain and muffled cries of excitement as the junior critics identify the scene as the old town of Nottingham and the fat, jolly old fellow with a tonsured dome as Friar Tuck. <laughs> The rotund friar is now busy auctioning confiscated goods and sings his auctioneer's song. As an honest auctioneer, I'm prepared to sell you here some goods in an assortment that is various. Various! Here's a late lamented deer that was once the king's, I fear. Ha! Killing him was certainly precarious. Carious. Here I have a line of delicious sparkling wine made to make humanity hilarious. Carious. Here's a suit of homespun brave fit for honest man or knave. Here's a stock, in fact, that's multifarious. Carious. And your proffers. Who am I? Open hearts and open coffers. Who am I? Bargains here for everyone. Going, 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 gone. Who will be put squire or dame? Who will? With your offers, pray come on. Now begin. I bid, I bid the same, I bid, I bid, I bid the same. It's going, 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 gone. I bid, I bid, I bid the same, I bid, I bid, I bid the same. It's going, going, gone, gone. Little John wisely suggests that they all adjourn to the nearest hostelry and spend the proceeds. Agreed, wheezes the old friar. But soon you'll find that I have a throat on me like a pelican. And off they go to Dame Durden's snug little tavern. Immortal, Friar Tuck, Little John, Will Scarlet, and Alan Dale. The youngest generation, though pleased by these antics, have a perplexed and frustrated look. With brutal directness, they hiss at mothers and uncles. Where's Robin Hood? Why isn't Robin Hood up there? We want to see Robin Hood! And here is their answer. When Alan Dale returns from the inn with Dame Durden, we learn that many bowmen from the Crusades are attending the Nottingham Fair today to compete in the archery tournament. And they'll be led by the gallant young Robert of Huntingdon, who comes into his estates and titles this very day. And here he is, the finest bowman, the bravest soldier in all England, Robert of Huntingdon. And with him, Lady Marion Fitzwalter, in the costume of a cavalier. Without further ado, they launch into a love duet, Come Free. Oh, it was within this hour we met. I've dreamed of such a face as thine Dreams I love to think of even yet When I held thy little hand in mine Was that then to wake Was for that dream and face to find Will that dream come true? Let me dream on you not love me then, and my dream is not true. Oh, what fate may be your weight if thy constancy claim a little true? This hand of mine may yet be mine if the fidelity is my love. So long 
what a joy to hear those words, my dear. Love ever will be King has commanded Marion to marry Robert, yet her guardian, that bold, scheming arch-villain Sir Tristram Testy, the Sheriff of Nottingham, would like her to marry his crony, the objectionable Guy of Gisborne. And the two have some foul conspiracy afoot, methinks. But what? Attend me closely, Robert, says Marion. I will dress as a simple village maiden and take a place in yonder dairy booth and try to learn their true motive. Hissed, they come. Marion whips off her wimple, snatches off her snood, and darts into the dairy. Just as the sheriff, as wicked a white as ever wore a jerkin, rolls onto the stage, followed by Guy, a gruesome type, and six guards carrying pikes. Some bold little boys boo the villainous sheriff, but he quells them with a baleful eye and a lusty baritone voice. <laughs> Sheriff of Nottingham, my eye is like the eagles. So sly and clever, in fact, I am a genius quite. He's a wonderful white. I'm considered remarkably bright. If anyone fractures the lightest law, bow low, bow low. A glance from me fills all his mind with awe. Bow low, a still bow. Bow low, I would bow if low, I were you. Bow. You may seek for I, but you never will describe such a wondrous sheriff as I. Such a brain, he makes no error. Such an eye, it's like a terror. He's a seething brain which can never go astray. I am sure to be right away. In fact, such sheriffs as we behold, we do not see every day. I never yet have made one mistake. I'd like to, for variety's sake, in short, infallible, here I am, the Sheriff of Nottingham. The Sheriff has more plots in him than a Christmas pudding has threepences. And enough evidence to send all the outlaws of Sherwood Forest to the gallows. <laughs> Furthermore, today he, the Sheriff, is responsible for delivering to Robert of Huntingdon a fortune of 100,000 crowns. But if he should make Guy Earl of Huntingdon, perhaps Guy would be satisfied with 50,000? And if he can persuade Marion to marry Guy, perhaps Guy will be content with a dowry of 10,000, eh? After all, my dear chap, business is business. <laughs> Guy, an oafish schizophrenic type, readily agrees to halve the spoils and licks his lips greedily. <laughs> and the plot becomes thicker than a mutton stew. 
Robert demands his titles and fortunes from the sheriff, but the sheriff says, Before you were born, your father was secretly married to a young peasant girl. Guy of Gisborne is their child. And so the rightful Earl of Huntington is, as these documents fully prove, Guy of Gisborne. <laughs> Then I shall join the outlaws of Sherwood Forest, shouts Robert. And the Lady Marion shouts, I'll come with thee too. So it's high diddly dee and an outlaw's life for me. And with vociferous expressions of approval from all, Robert, Marion, and the outlaws set off for the forest. <laughs> And now we're in Sherwood Forest, in the Outlaw's Retreat, and Robert of Huntingdon has become Robin Hood, the leader of the forest felons. Life in these parts has all the charm and most of the discomforts of a summer camp. What ho, sweet Annabelle, little John roars, fill me a tankard! And then he pledges the rosy-cheeked rustic with a song. <laughs> And it's will ye go off with me, my lads, and it's will ye go off with me. It is a draught of fine old wine I offer unto ye. All humming in the glass, lads, it cleaves the heart forlorn. Oh, here's a friend to everyone, it brings them hope newborn. And quaff, lads, will make you feel divine. Through all my days, I've sing the praise of sparkling ruby wine. So, lads, lads, and quaff, lads, will make you feel divine. Through all my days, I've sing the praise of sparkling ruby wine. Of sparkling Will ye love me true, my lass? And it's will ye love me true? If not, I'll drink one flag and more, and so farewell to you. No John or Mull or Nan or Doll shall make my heart forlorn. So here's a toast to everyone. Let's drink until the morn. So will make you feel divine through all my days i sing the praise of sparkling ruby wine so love let the quaff light will make you feel divine through all my days i'll sing the praise of sparkling ruby wine of Now, in a very short space of time, there is much talk of the exploits of their new leader, Robin Hood, whose impish daring has brought them much plunder and few qualms as he robs the rich to give to the poor. Alan Dale is the only outlaw who does not applaud Robin, as he believes that his sweetheart, Annabelle, has eyes only for their new leader. But more of this anon. Well, here comes the sheriff and Guy of Gisborne, artfully disguised as tinkers, honest journeymen, once more full of plots, but this time for the capture of the bold bandit of Sherwood Forest. And fold the riddle, fold the row, what a cunning plan it is. But more of this and all. For Maid Marian now enters, fingering her farthingale nervously, for she's not yet joined the merry men and is still searching for them. But her courage revives when she surveys the beauty of the back cloth and the leafy cutouts, and ardently she sings.
But as luck would have it, the first member of the outlaw's camp whom Marion meets is the buxom Annabelle. Whom have we here? asks Annabelle. A new recruit for Robin Hood's band? Yes, you've guessed the truth, my good girl, says Marion. I've come to join Robin Hood. So Annabelle escorts Marion back to headquarters, pausing here and there en route to bring down a wild boar or two with an arrow or two. And in high good humour, the two girls hail Robin. For Robin and Marion, it's a joyful moment, and in this leafy glade, the perfect setting for youthful romance, Marion sings of her love. What of the two tinkers whom Alan Dale has brought into the camp for food and shelter? When they hear that Alan is jealous of his leader, and of the affection that he inspires in the girlish heart of Annabelle, they act swiftly. Rather than see my sweetheart marry a Robin, he says, I will deliver him up to the sheriff. But I am the sheriff, says the tinker, and I'll take prompt delivery. Here is a bag of gold. I don't want your money, the young outlaw informs him. Vengeance is enough for me. Vengeance! There is an angry demonstration from several girls and boys in the gallery, but to no avail. Robin is seized by the sheriff's guards, who enter this time without pikes, and is whisked off to Nottingham jail, as the curtain makes a dramatic descent. The scene is now the courtyard of the sheriff's house. We see the jail over on the right, and on the left a forge and anvil, on which Will Scarlet, under duress, is making chains for the imprisoned Robin. And when a crowd of friars, heavily cowled, enter, the penetrating eyes of the youthful audience are quick to identify them as those resourceful rogues, the merry men of Sherwood. Today, Marion is to be wed to the odious Guy of Gisborne. And when she enters in her bridal finery, escorted by the sheriff, Eleanor Dale, who has repented of his treachery, steps forward in the guise of a monk and asks the sheriff's permission to tell the story of a damsel who was charmed away from a hapless marriage by hearing these wedding bells ring out their chimes.
In the meantime, Will Scarlet, who's gone into the jail ostensibly to fasten the chains on Robin Hood, releases his leader, whose appearance in the courtyard is a signal to the friars to throw off their cowls and habits and reveal themselves as Robin Hood's men in their Lincoln green and armed to the teeth. They make short shift of the sheriff and his guards, and the youthful audience suffocates with merriment and glee as the fur flies. And Robin takes Marion in his arms for the song that was sung originally in this musical comedy, but is to say, usually reserved for more solemn occasions. Oh, promise me. Oh, promise me that someday you and I will take a love together to some sky. Where we can be alone and faith renewed And find the hollows where those flowers grew Those first sweet violets of early spring Which come in whispers thrill us both and see of love unspeakable that is to be. Oh, promise me, oh, promise me. This over, villagers, soldiers, friars and outlaws join forces. The gentlemen jerk their jerkins, the ladies kick their kirtles, and all go into a rollicking country dance. <laughs> Hot and sticky, clap excitedly as the curtain falls, and the enchanting world of Robin Hood and his merry men disappears. There's a scramble and a scuffle as the older generation take charge, and order is gradually restored as the theatre empties, and another night ends in our musical comedy theatre. <laughs> 